are live from the twists and turns of Watkins Glen International in wine country in the southern tier of New York as we welcome you to round number 23 of the NSRL Cup Series. It's the 200 at the Glen. 82 grueling laps around the Watkins Glen International and with four races to go until the playoffs begin, it's still a hot battle to see who can get to their appropriate seating. We come on the air and say good evening, everyone. I'm Marty Sakawa. So glad you could join us for live coverage of the National Sim Racing League. Well, folks, it's been a great season so far, and the regular season is almost over. Last week, if you missed us at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway, it was an incredible race. Landon Lacey went back to back. Winning last week at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. I shouldn't say it was an incredible race. It was a wreck fest. An incredible broadcast, though. And Landon Lacey took home the win, holding off Tyler Rush. The latter was looking for his first win of the season. Want to give a big thank you to Ashton Crowder, who joined me in the booth that race. And again, like I said, an awesome broadcast for the fans to watch. So the final results after New Hampshire Motor Speedway looked like this. Taking the win was Landon Lacey, David Smeal Jr. second, Jimmy Barr third, Mark Sakosi fourth, Alan Crowell fifth, Dylan Clark sixth, Tyler Isley seventh, yeah, Tyler Rush that. eighth, Brian Preslar ninth, and Justin Diltz round out the top ten. They were the only drivers that finished on the lead lap. Well, we get set to go racing. You saw the breakdown during pre-race. Here is it. Here it is. 82 lap stages will be laps ends at laps 20 and 40. Around the 2.42 mile road course, six tire sets will be used. Landon Lacey on provisional pole at the moment. Let's give you your as we get set to go racing. We have just about 18 to 20 drivers that are just about ready to take the green flag here. At Watkins Glen International, qualifying is in the books. You're going to copy. So we should be good. While we're at it, let's tell you how the playoff picture looks after 23 races, four races to go until the playoffs begin. And so it's Josh Susie out in front with five wins. If nobody get up to Susie's level if, no, if nobody if Tyler Isley does not win as Mark Cook is not in the lineup if Tyler Isley does not win Josh Susie will clinch the number one seed for the playoffs he of course of course is locked into the playoffs Tyler Isley second in points Mark Cook third he may leave the series though he may have officially left the series who knows Mark Sikosi is fourth Kayla McCarthy fifth Dylan Clark has moved up to six as he completed 13 races from last week at New Hampshire. They are currently locked into the playoffs. Seventh is Josh Aaron with 600 points. Eighth is Briggs Swope with 5,992 points. Ninth is Alan Crowell with 568 points. Tenth, Justin Diltz with 546. Eleventh, Jimmy Barr with 545. Twelfth, Brian Preslar with 435 points. Thirteenth, Tom Perra with 390 points. 14th is Justin Cope. He's got 383 points. 15th, Brian Wiggins with 342 points. The final playoff spot currently belongs to Daniel Menzies with 329 points. Now here is where it gets interesting in the standings. There is one driver ahead of them that's yet to make all 13 starts, but is close. That's Ryan Broderick in the five. He is above Brian Wiggins in the standings so if he makes at least two more starts of the four races we have left in the regular season he could clinch a spot today Kayla McCarthy working on her first lap at the moment and clocks in 10th quick at a 120 point two five it's right on board with her for a lap I did a little bit of testing here around Watkins Glen before we got into the lobby and it is a fun it's fun it's a lot more challenging than the cup cars were in the past few years when cup cars raced at Watkins Glen International 
Got to be very careful going up on the S's and, and as well on the exit of the bus stop where you see McCarthy about to enter. You see she downshifts from fifth to third gear. And then this outer loop, it's going to be very tricky for the drivers. Got to keep it on this low groove on the right in order to get a nice drive off to get up to fifth gear. And then you downshift twice into third gear entering turn number six. Much better lap for McCarthy. She clocks in third on the charts. Let's take a look and see how those times look at the moment. It is Landon Lacey on the top with a 110.72. Dylan Clark second with a 110.91. Kayla McCarthy currently third. 11 different drivers have qualified. We have a 19-car entry list for tonight's 200 at the Glen. Final minute of qualifying is underway, but that does it on the lineup. So officially, your pole sitter is Landon Lacey in car number 53. Beautiful facility. Watkins Glen. There's the Sir Jackie Stewart grandstand in turn number six. I'm from New York. I go to Watkins Glen every year for NASCAR and IMSA. Just a beautiful facility. I love covering races inside the infield. I love to take a look, take a look at what's happening in and outside of the infield. It's just, it's just incredible. This is a this is a this would be a good track to put on your bucket list. So just a couple of seconds away from gritting the field here to take the green flag. We've got one driver making their debut with the series, and that is David Salter in car number, excuse me, that is not David Salter. Uh, that is Don DeGroote in car number 20. So we are set to go, ladies and gentlemen. Here is your starting lineup for round number 23. Landon Lacey is on the pole with a 110.721 in the number 53. Next to him is Dylan Clark. Excuse me, in the 34. Row number two, Kayla McCarthy in the 24. And Tyler Isley in the 17. Row number three, Justin Diltz in the number 19. And David Smeal Jr. in car number 29. Row four, Alan Crowell in the 54. And Ryan Broderick in the 5. Rounding out the top 10 on the lineup is Briggs Swope in the 7. And Jeff Cox in the 45. We go to row number six where you find Alex Robinson in the 23, the final driver that took time. And then Don DeGroote leads the provisionals. Row number seven, Kyle Milliken in the number 42. And Josh Susie in the 12. Row eight, Brian Preslar in the 67. Jimmy Barr in the 81. Row number nine gives us Mark Sacosi in the 91. And Stan Mayberry in the 99. And rounding out the field of 19 drivers is David Salter in the 88. be a fun one here at Watkins Glen International there you see the front row getting ready to go 30 seconds just about until the drivers roll off don't be surprised if we see a couple of drivers roll off here on pit road wait a couple seconds to move their way up let's listen to some final words from some of the drivers gotcha yeah one last one right here the wall out how about now you got me out yeah I got you Mark with that. I got communication. Oh, holy fuck, I got something. They're getting all set up here. They're having a little bit of fun early here. So while we're at it, let's give you your weather report as we take the green flag. Set for January 19, 2022. Surprising a track like Watkins Glen can actually have a date just like this. Track temp 84 degrees. Cloudy skies, which will mean a combination of slick track and faster cars, though, at the same time because of the cloudy conditions. Tra air temp is 81 degrees, so a hot one here at Watkins Glen in January. 
I mean, I don't know what to think about that considering the fact that that rare, very rarely happens and right now it is. Uh, what's the temp here in the great state of New York? It's 31 degrees at the moment, so there's that. Wind blowing at nine miles an hour. Won't be a factor in tonight's race, though. Set to go at 12.15 p.m. Eastern Time. Breakdown of Watkins Glen International. 2.42 miles around the short circuit. The series does not use the boot. Seven turns. They start things off here. We can't show you really show you a map on your screen at the moment unless we go to the info. We'll, show, we'll pop up the info for you here so you can see the track. Turn number one is what they call the 90, 90 degree right hand turn and that is downhill into turn number one. Then a big uphill you go up and into the S's, turns two, three, and four. Then down the back straight where you go into what is called the inner loop. I call it the bus stop specifically, just like Daytona. Uh, just like there's super stretch uh, bus stop. And then you go around the outer loop, which is considered turn number five, a.k.a. the carousel. Then you go down into turn, a downhill into turn number six, a left-hander, and then a right-hander in turn number seven as you're downshifting from fifth all the way down to second in those two corners. The shift, the shift points, by the way, when you're in turn one, you go from fourth down to second. In the, in the uphills, of course, you're trying to go from second gear. Then when you're in turn number four, that's where you're going to be around fifth gear. And then in the bus stop, you're going from fifth to third gear, riding in, in third gear around the carousel, upshifting to fifth gear. In, the, in turn number six, you downshift to third, and then turn seven, downshift to second. That's what a lap is like around Watkins Glen International. Seats 38,900 has just a very banking from 0 to 10 degrees. You call it the Glen and New York's Thunder Row. Well, race fans, it's time to strap in and hold on tight because these men and women are about to turn them loose and drop the sledgehammer. They come off of turn number 7. Landon Lacey looking to go three in a row. Dylan Clark looking to go back to back on the road courses. The two most recent winners of the National Sim Racing League make the front row. It's showtime at the Glen. And right away, Dylan Clark gets the early jump, but Lacey's got to run on the inside as they go side by side looking for the race lead. Got to be very careful on the uphills of the S's. Oh, they nearly made contact. Dylan Clark got a little bit squirrely in turn number three. Backs out of it, tucks back in line right behind Landon Lacey. They go down the back straightaway. And Lacey and Clark lets Lacey keep the lead. Got to be very careful about the first curbing in the bus stop because there is a huge bump. So Landon Lacey has opened up a decent lead early on Dylan Clark, followed up by... Kayla McCarthy, David Smeal Jr., and Ryan Broderick rounding out the top five. Bro Broderick used a little bit of pavement in the runoff area off of turn five as they make their way into turn six. Keep you posted, by the way, on all the accidents that happened today. There was a big rule change that came out after the bleep show that was known as New Hampshire. Here were the rule changes. They tightened the box with incident points. The incident point penalties, 9x will earn you a drive through penalty, 13x another, 17x you are disqualified and parked for the race. They're trying to keep it clean with the playoffs beginning in just about a month from now. Down the back straightaway, here's Broderick trying to look inside for position number four on David Smeal. There's that huge bump I was talking about. Broderick just clipped it as he was slowing down as he makes his way down to third gear. Here's the track map for you at home wondering what it's, where all your favorite drivers are on the screen. Broderick again using some runoff. Will cost him some time. Let's go to 
Justin Dilt and Tyler Isley as they do get it for P6. Isley almost had a run, but tucks it back in line behind Justin Dilt. Remember, if Tyler Isley does not win this race today, Josh Susi will clinch the number one seed in the playoffs. Of course, it is a long race. First stage ends at lap number 20. Here goes Broderick inside, entering the 90 in turn one on Smeal. They don't make contact, though. Smeal gets credited for an off track, though. It cuts it back in line. They may not actually call it an off track. It may still be fine considering the amount of space that was left. Landon Lacey, quickest lap right now, a 110.96. Tyler Isley with the run on Justin Dilt. He takes away sixth position. That puts him another spot up for a stage point. Let's go to the back of the field. You'll find Brian Preslar and Kyle Milliken down the back straight. And Preslar lets Salter go. We have an off track from Briggs Swope in the number seven. I think he caught a little bit of grass in the inner loop, and he has to slow down because of it. Your eye racing gives you like 35 seconds to let off the gas to give your time back, or else you lead to a penalty. Broderick goes off track once again in the five. I think he used the runoff in turn number six. That was for just about two seconds. That's what we heard on our end. Let's go back over here. Tyler Isley, David Smeal Jr. going to work. That's the battle for fifth position. Meanwhile, a big lockup for Broderick, I believe. He is way off the track in turn one. And that puts him all the way back into the sixth position early. And here comes Stilts as well, the number 19, who may try and get a crack at, at sixth position. Let's go back to the battle for fourth position between Smeal and Isley. This is from the rear end of David Smeal Jr. right on top of the curbs. Isley back on the gas first. He's got to run up on the outside. Side by side and Smeal lets Isley go. Tyler Isley is up into the fourth position. Now does Smeal try to answer it back? That's the question now. And I don't think he will. Still losing a little bit of time. In turn number seven, Jeff Cox closing in on Kyle Milliken. That was a battle for 13th spot, but now he loses some time. Here comes Briggs Swope in car number seven. The battle for 14th. We got reports Dilt just went off track, and he may have on the infield off of turn number one. I'm not too sure, but Dilt is off the pace in the number 19. I think he's got it back going, though, and he does. Couple of drivers having personal best. Tyler Isley was one of them. Another one being Mark Sikosi in the 91. And same with David Salter, Brian Preslar. Trouble, Jeff Cox in the 45. Oh, that's Mayberry in the 99 also involved. And Mayberry took a head-on shot into that safer barrier. Well, for the first time tonight, we go to our replay to see what brought what happened to Cox. Remember, no yellows because it's a road course. Oh. Nope, that was completely different. There was some wacky racing going on. An NK Mayberry. Let's watch another angle from our aerial shot. And we have it somewhere for you. Let's see here. I know the trees are in the way. Oh, one car guy in the ground. I think that was Swope in the seven. So now what happened with Mayberry is my next question. Let's ride on board with the 99. Oh, man. Oh, he caught that big curb and then just wheel hopped it. 
Preslar let him go and was being very patient. I don't know if Mayberry got the angle on that, but from what we're hearing, the 45 is done for the evening and is out. So six laps are complete. Landon Lacey leads with a 3.5 second lead on Dylan Clark. They're both in the S's at the moment, nearing lap traffic to Alex Robinson in the 23. This is a battle for 11th spot. Jimmy Barr and Kyle Milliken. We all know Milliken's style. One mistake, he's done for the race. He doesn't care if it's on him or if he causes it. Barr with a terrible turn one. Milliken all over. Right on board with the 42. Let's go on, on board as he goes uphill. Hearing Alex Robinson is off track in the number 23 machine. So I believe that was just to let the leader go, and it was. Milliken didn't really have a lot of downforce. Have a lot of speed on the aerodynamics up the uphills. So we'll see if he gets the run in this corner here. Does Milliken try to take over? He can't. Meanwhile, in front of them, here comes Susie on the charge after starting from the pits. Inside on Mark Sikosi. That's for ninth on the track. So Sikosi currently has the final playoff point. Oh, Milliken is loose and he's done. Wow, I thought he was gone after that. I thought he was going to hit the wall. But what a save from Milliken. As he loses a lot of time because of that. We won't be able to show you a replay as it doesn't it does not trigger anything. But that was impressive. Oh, Susie all over Dilt, and Susie's got damage! Josh Susie with damage in the number 12. And that's not good on the front end. That's optional damage, I would have to say. And we'll see if Mark Sikosi can take over. I don't know if there was contact with Justin Dilt's. But this is the first I know of the front end damage on the number 12. Well, this is going to be from ways back. I think it just happened now. This is on the same lap. He just got by Sakosi. Well, right on board until he hits the inner loop. Because something may, must have had to happen there. The car had his dilt in the 19. Looking good so far down the essays. The car didn't come out from underneath him. Oh, dilt, dilt's off the pace. Oh, man. Susie couldn't move it to the left. Or else that car would have spun into the wall so Susie had nowhere to go pretty much and he's going to pass for 8th position on 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 Dilts. Sikosi's still lagging back. Now what's the damage look like on the 19? There it is. That's rear end damage that a driver does not want to see at all. Well he hasn't seen it literally but for his virtual crew. Oh man! Dilts was trying to cut Susie off and I don't think the 12 is liking that. Oh, Gary Briggs Swope in the number seven's gone off track. Susie again trying to look. There's nothing he can do. This is the best battle on track for P8. Now what happens here in the bus stop this time? Does Susie try to outbreak Diltz? No, he tucks it back in line. Diltz makes a mistake there. Oh, he's sideways! Susie takes advantage and takes away eighth position. 
We're halfway through in stage number one, folks. That's Broderick you hear on the radio up in fifth position. I don't know. I think they were working on Alex Robinson for our reports. So now Sakosi on the attack of Delts and the two primary sponsors of the series, Affordable SEO and Speed Demon Setups. Well, we are halfway through in stage number one. Alex Robinson currently leads on Dylan Clark, Kayla McCarthy, Tyler Isley, and Ryan Broderick. We'll take you side by side for the first time tonight here at Watkins Glen. Welcome back to Watkins Glen International for round number 23. This is the 200 at the Glen. Another road course race this season for the National Sim Racing League. Let's update you here on Jimmy Barr in the number 81 who has not had best of luck in this race today. He's currently 14th and bringing it in to pit road and we can explain why on the replay. Let's show you what happened. Locked him up in the bus stop and went right through. Did not want to take the risk to spin the car out, so he kept it straight. Felt went to a stop to give, his, to give his time back and kept it going. I don't think he really lost any positions at all. But it has not been the best of races for him today. So Barr repairing the tires currently in the number 81 machine. But meanwhile, Landon Lacey continues to lead by seven seconds on Dylan Clark, Kayla McCarthy third, Tyler Isley fourth, and Ryan Broderick the top five. Here's the best battle on track. It's Kyle Milliken and Justin Diltz. This is for ninth position. Mark Sikosi currently the first one out in 11th when it comes to stage points as we have seven laps to go in stage number one. Lacey's coming by to make it six. And my goodness, he's already in turn number seven. And the guys that are just in the top 10 are approaching the S's. A pretty interesting race we've got so far. Road courses, you either love them or you hate them. If you hate them, you lose a lot of time. If you love them, you're gonna be the best. If you're in the middle, hey, you may lose a lot still. Milliken trying the inside on Diltz for ninth position. Catches the big bump. Diltz goes off the track. 
and they both go off the track. Milliken's got to regain control, and he's got that. Here comes Sikulski. The battle for 10th position is underway. Now, how does Sikosi try to take advantage of this into turn number six? Rikave, careful, trying pressure Dills into making a mistake. Oh, got off track there, off the curbing. And a nice exit for Sikosi. Can he use that to his advantage? The answer is yes. Dilts plays defense still. That 10th position. Two identical cards, they really are. Teammates, good friends, riding in, in the Dodges. I think Sikosi also has right, right side damage. I think he's just gonna play it safe, be careful. Let Dilts have 10th position. Sikosi, I tell you, has been so close to two wins this season. His loan came at Myrtle Beach. He really wanted New Hampshire badly, wanted Iowa badly. Lacey on the radio. We just missed that. Apologies there. See if Sikosi, if Dilts makes another mistake. From the rear end of Justin Dilts. Thank you, Sam. They're working on Stan Mayberry, so that's why Josh Susie says thank you. And leaders should be approaching them soon. And Lacey approaching turn number seven. It could be a battle as well for a free position spot. Who knows what happens? There will only be two lucky dogs in this race. As again, Diltz goes wide. Sikosi's got to run. If I'm Sikosi, I'm trying to cue Diltz up on the radio and say, come on, man, let me have it. I'm faster than you. I can get to Milliken and try and take away ninth position. There's another battle on your screen. Kyle Milliken is closed in on Alan Crowell in the battle for seventh position. Excuse me, that's for eighth. Milliken's got the run in six. Excuse me, that's in turn five. It up on the curbing once again. Updating you on Susie, by the way. He's made his way up to sixth position. Growl tight again in turn number six. A little bit of understeer compared to the 42. Milliken clipped the curbing. Here we go. And Growl's, I think, let him take the position away. Fucking driver. Tyler Isley, we're hearing not really too happy at something. As we continue to watch that battle for position. Sikosi, meanwhile, trying to close in still on Dilt and look for 10th. Final stage point with leaders approaching. This could be close here. We've got three laps to go in the stage. Here goes Sikosi. He's got the run. Dilts lets him go. Tenth position goes to Mark Sikosi. You saw the leader right there just for a split second. That being Landon Lacey in the 53. 7.7 .7 seconds on Dylan Clark. I expect race control to throw the yellow off of turn number seven. Up there in race control as always. Chris Lynn in the number 81. Appreciate all of you coming out here on the National Sim Racing League Facebook page and twitch.tv slash Marty Sakala. Let us know who you are rooting for in the chat. I have a feeling Chris Lynn is rooting for Jimmy Barr or Jeffrey Cox. We can tell you, by the way, Jimmy Barr is officially out of the race. And here we go for pit stops. This is interesting. Justin Diltz comes in and then Landon Lacey follows him in. I think it's for trying to stay out and get the lead. He doesn't care about stage points. Interesting strategy as the pits close. This will give Lacey the lead. Still at the yellow. Whatever strategy happened, Lacey would have the lead. So this gives Dylan Clark 
the point for the first time in this race when it comes to leading a lap. We'll watch Lacey's pit stop right here. Of course, at Watkins Glen, everyone starts on the left sides first, then goes to the rights. It's another battle. Seventh position, Milliken continuing to make his way up on David Smeal Jr. In turn six. Milliken trying to pressure Smeal into a mistake. Again, like I said, I expect race control to throw a yellow off of turn number seven, so that way that pace car Cat comes right to the race leader. Here we go, Milliken inside on Smeal, and that should work out for the 42. Ooh, not just yet, but Milliken's got the fur line. And Milliken clears to take away seventh. Second place battle, Landon Lacey, Kayla McCarthy going at it as we're on the final lap of stage number one. These two drivers coming to the final lap. And that's a good battle on your screen. McCarthy lets Lacey go because of Lacey's fresh tires. And makes it work. So Landon Lacey up into second position. Meanwhile, Dylan Clark around turn five and headed for the green and white checkered flag. Here comes Clark off for turn number seven, and this should bring out the yellow immediately. And the him go to the line. There it is. Trying to get out of the way, but Alex Campy is sitting there. Part. So Dylan Clark wins the first stage, and we will pause here and step aside. And when we come back, we will have pit stops for the first time. Let's make sure there's the pace car. There it is. So Dylan Clark. Your stage winner, and when we come back, we will see green flag pit stops. Stay with us. Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. Stops about to take place here with Dylan Clark bringing everyone in except for Landon Lacey, who remember stayed out. As we will watch the stops here happen.
As Clark gets away, first in the race off of Pitt Road. Nice simple stop, 14.9 seconds. We'll wait for the driver to come out in second. And that is Kayla McCarthy, Tyler Isley, Ryan Broderick, and David Smeal Jr. Those are your top five drivers exiting Pitt Road. So Landon, Landon Lacey, assuming the race lead back, and he'll lead them when we come back to green. Stay with us once again. We'll be back. Back here at the Glen. We'll put 22 laps up on the board this time. We'll check and see if this is two to green or is this is one to green. Left for the restart. Just remember, guys, when you come down pit road, stay to the left this week because the pit roads are backwards. Maintain left side all the way down until you get to your box. So this is one lap to the green flag. We'll keep listening to race chatter at the moment, but first we'll reset the field for you. Landon Lacey and Dylan Clark. Get this fucking 20 car out of the way. Tyler Icy not happy at somebody. That is Don DeGroot. Chris, dude, get him the fuck out of the way or I'm fucking him. I, I don't care. Oh, boy. Yeah, Don DeGroot. Who's the 20 car? Dumbass. Fuck. The fucking dumb lap. Dumb, dumb fucking DeGroot did not move. Car. Like, tell the fucking park to the side and get out of the way. It was the new guy. He moved. Yeah, he's getting there. He's back there now. All right, so now that's all set. Tyler Isley and David Smeal Jr. Excuse me, Kayla McCarthy. Yes, Kayla McCarthy's in row two. Row number three. We'll have to look here through this perspective is Ryan Broderick and David Smeal Jr. Row four, Josh Susi and Alan Crow rounding out the top 10, Mark Sikosi, Kyle Milliken. Listen to radio chat as we're getting ready to go back to green.
There we go. They cut through the fucking... They can't cut there because they got a fucking concrete wall there, right? No, it's open. They did it when they just started to stay away from each other. They started doing that in real life? No, in real life, I don't think so, but... Uh, they did it when they just started tonight to keep away from each other all stayed in line. All right, so we're ready to go back to green to begin stage number two. Landon Lace sees the control car. There's a blue sign, the MRN sign. That's the Speed Demon restart zone. We are back to green. Let's see if Dylan Clark can get something to work in turn number one with three laps of fresh and tires. He cannot. Lacey cuts down. He holds serve. McCarthy third, Isley fourth, Roderick is fifth. Up the S's. No harm, no foul between anyone at the moment. Milliken trying inside on Crowell. Get will be interesting in the bus stop. We got one locking up, and that's Dylan Clark in the 34. And same with the 29 of Smealers at Mayberry. Perhaps one of the best road racers on the series. Clark goes back to third. But the question is, did he stop in time? That was Smeal, by the way. That went off the track. So after all of that chaos, Dylan Clark goes back into the third position. McCarthy's up to second. And this is the best battle on track for P2. There goes Clark down to the inside. P2 is a his, hops the curve for just a moment. McCarthy gives him space. And Dylan Clark is up to second. Ryan Broderick, I look inside on Tyler Isley. Meanwhile, Susie's back in the equation. He tries to go around the outside, but tucks it back in line. Kyle Milliken's also in that battle too. Milliken hops the third curve and the bus stop. Oh man, Milliken got sideways off the outer loop. And almost lost control of that race car. Broderick and Susi in the battle for P5. On board with the number 12, trying to regain his ground. Broderick trying to break the draft, I think. Oh boy! Susi with the big outbreak on Broderick, and there was nearly a lockup from the 12. Susie trying to diamond this. Does he have a run in the second S's? No, he doesn't. He's trying to find out where. Oh, man, that controls. There was contact. And Susie caught the wall. Here comes Milligan to take advantage of it. And Milligan takes away sixth position. Susie back to seven. Sakosi has made its way up to eighth. He's currently your home. Biggest mover of the race after starting in 17th spot. Susie, you see, was able to get that front end repaired on the number 12. But we will see if he can fight his way back up to Broderick. He got really tight there in turn six. Chris Lynn's in the chat saying he's hoping for a good race tonight, good fun race, and Excuse me, that's what we're seeing so far. Let's go to the lap traffic pack at the moment. There's a good battle here. Brian Preslar and debuting Don DeGroote in the battle for 12th position. Justin Dilts reports that he went off track for just a second. I've never got to be very careful. Strong rolls as Preslar goes wide. Dilts is in the pits. Here goes DeGroote down low. And DeGroote is up to 12th position. 
Fresler did not lose a spot, and I believe this is a drive through penalty for Justin Diltz. Remember the new rules. In effect this weekend, 9x is a drive through 13x is an off-track, 17x, you're DQ'd. Right now, on my calculations, Justin Dilt has six off track, so I would assume this is his first penalty of the evening. Ryan Broderick, Tyler Isley, ding, ding, ding. Here we go for P4. Closest battle here for the fourth position. Broderick, a nice turn to one. Let's go on board up the S's with Ryan. And we've got a confirmation that Justin Dilts actually has 13 incident points. And he has got the most incident points of all drivers so far in this race. Yikes. That's no brainer. Continue to watch that battle for P4. Milliken, Susie trying to join in on the fun, and Diltz is back in the pits once again, and that may be a DQ. Only three drivers currently with zero X. That's Mark Sikosi, Dylan Clark, and Tyler Isley. How does Dylan Clark have zero X still? He went through the bus stop. That's an off track. Oh, look at this. Susie tried inside on Milliken. There was a lockup up ahead. I would assume that came from Broderick because he lost a little bit of time. Different lines entering the S's. And right now it's the advantage on Milliken over Susie. Broderick got them both, though. Here's the run for Susie down the back straight. He's got the draft. Plays it safe. Everyone up there rocking the cork, rocking the curbs. Continuing the battle for fourth spot. Oh, Milliken! Hang on. Nice save. Isley Susie takes over the sixth spot because of it. And a big lockup from Broderick. And the five keeps it going. Meanwhile, Milliken still trying to attack on Susie. Brandon lays his mean we lead, meanwhile. Still not as big as it was in stage one. Two and a half seconds on Dylan Clark. Then 10 seconds behind him is Kayla McCarthy in third. Here we go once again. Josh Susie, the run on Ryan Broderick. Up the S as they go. Fist spots. Oh, they, oh, they make contact. Broderick turns Susie around. And Susie is not happy at it at all. Car stuck in the fucking S's. This could bring a yellow out. Full course yellow is out here at the Glen. Ding, ding, ding again. Doesn't look like too much damage on the number 12, except the rear end is get together. crunched up. Fucking Jay. Why did he get a caution for that? Who got who? Here we go. It's tough to tell, but a unique angle there. We've got a drone shot we can show you. Why did he do this shit? Well, I, I guess we got a fucking... Oh, he just turned right. I don't know. Why is there always them guys? Chris, he... uh, why is there a caution? Because he's sitting in the middle of the S's and there was cars coming. We talked about it before Road, Road Atlanta. Road America. Drivers, talk, ex drivers are so confused at the moment. Alright, don't agree with it, but okay. And you, you know, 
there's worse things that happen in North America. So this will change everything. We're going to step exactly. aside here, though, and we're going to go to break. We are under caution flag. Landon Lacey currently leads the field at the moment. Ten laps to go in stage two. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. Pit stops underway, green flag stops. Now this will be interesting because we because drivers only have six tire sets. As we look at it with Landon Lacey, this is the second tire set he is using. Ryan Broderick comes out ahead. Now there's been a lot of debate on what's been happening between Broderick and the KTS guys. And this is not going over too well. There's people were asking as well why a yellow flag flew. I think Broderick was the one that asked that. If not, it may have been Robinson. That's because of Susie being in a dangerous part of the track and could not get out, could not, could not move. This was talked in the driver's meeting as well of drivers of that full course yellows could come out because of drivers being on the racing surface uh, when they're spun and or stuck. So that is the reason why we are under a full course yellow. You probably haven't seen it often uh, on road course. You rarely see it with the series on road courses because everyone can usually get out of the way. There's a lot of open daylight. So that's what's happening at the moment. Dylan Clark is the leader. We'll step aside and listen to race control. And then I'm taking right side on the restart. Uh, what's that, Dylan? Right side on the restart. 10-4, thank you.
leaders taking the right side? All righty, so we've got one lap until we go back to the green flag. And we'll reset the field once again. And stage number two, by the way, ends at lap number 40. Dylan Clark and Kayla McCarthy, that is the front row. Row number two, Tyler Isley. And it should be Ryan Broderick, unless they are calling for a penalty against Broderick. No, that should be good, yeah. Milliken is in row number two. Row three is Ryan Broderick and David Salter. Row four is David Smeal and Mark Sikosi. Row number five is Alan Kreville and Landon Lacey. This infield, doesn't it just look beautiful here? It, it really does. You know what? I bet you. I bet you this. I'm going to adjust this camera. And I bet you I could see my, uh, if I can figure this out, put it back on static. I bet you I could see my campsite from here. That is turn number six. Yep, that's right there. Right there in the center. <laughs> put it down a little bit more here. Yep, this is it. My camper was over here. That was the shower areas. This shade right here, this is where I camped out. This was pretty packed as well. So I was over here where the showers were. And this is, a, this again, Watkins Glen International. Must go to. You must camp. It's absolutely worth it. Will not disappoint at all when you go. All right, that shouldn't save, correct? Yeah, that's good. You know, sometimes I like to pull a little John Madden sometimes when we're bored here. And we get ready to go back to the green flag. So I could see my camper from the blimp. <laughs> Technically, it's not my camper. I camped with a couple of buddies during NASCAR weekend. And that was where we uh, camped out. So, Okay, enough talking. We got a race we got to tend to at the moment. is the control car for this restart. Remember, he won stage number one and is one of the best on road courses in the series. Don't know why we have a Porsche pace car for NASCARs on a road course. That doesn't make sense either. Why can't it just be a Chevy or a Toyota pace car? <laughs> Clark is the control car. The MRN sign is the Speed Demon restart zone. There it is, and we're back to racing. Man, what a restart. Oh, trouble behind them. Someone did not get the memo. And we've got junk. Sakosi, Broderick, Mayberry, and Swope. That is from the second row. Third row, ladies and gents. And there are a bunch of unhappy drivers at the moment. I believe we've been muted, by the way. Our chat has been disabled. Oh, no. We are having some technical difficulties with the radios at the moment to try and listen. But this will be interesting to see what the hell just happened. See if that can give you a nice shot here from mid-pack. Oh, someone did not go. And that... Oh, no. Don't tell me. Was that Broderick again? Let's see if this was. Clark went. Wow. Broderick did not go and got turned from behind. And I think that was the 29 of Smeal who said, you're not going, I'm making you go. 
and that making you go was a little bit too much. Well, this will be the uh, determiner of what happened. You can't see Clark going at all. Look, they're already going. Oh, he may not even have the contact at all. He just tried to guess it way too much. Let's rewind that again. Yeah, that would, that may not have been contact at all. He just did not go. Oh, you know what? He missed his shift. He missed his shift. You saw the two go down to one. That's just a downshift mount misfortune. Remember, these are sequential cards, not not H patterns. And he must have forgotten that when he shifted, it was supposed to be the other way. Yeah, that sucks when you miss a shift like that. Unless he's using an H pattern, which I don't think is poss is possible with uh next gen. We have a we have a drone shot we'll show you here. Yeah, he missed his shift. There was no contact at all between Smeal and company. Oh look who else got involved. Lacey! Wow, you just hate to see that big time. Wow. This is from Sakosi's on board. You hate to see it, folks. Just came right in front of him. I thought for a moment. When you think about it in the first place, you think, oh boy, what happened here? Let's watch the 99 of Stan Mayberry from his perspective on this restart. They're already going. And he sees what's happening. He didn't even go at all. He's just being a nice boy. <laughs> and then we also have Briggs Swope in the number seven. He's behind Mayberry in all of this. And he stopped. Wow. What can you say? Come on, fellas. This is my home track. You're supposed to play nice here. Don't get me mad at my home track. I got legit people here watching this. All right, let's see if we got chatter. We're going to check this out. Well, Lynn's helping me out here and enabling driver chat back. Stand by here real quick. We're just trying to fix this up here. There we go. I think we've got it fixed up now. Oh, man, we'll just we'll just relax here. We'll keep you on uh, cue. We'll have three to go, and we take the green. You know, I mean, I'll talk about that restart or no, or what? This this is something that needs to be. I, I'm beyond pissed because of how stupid the rules are about this fucking restart. You can't have cars going half pace speed going to the green. He's going 40 fucking miles. In Damn. Wow. Let's try and talk with the driver here and. 15 wrecks. Do you want more excitement? That will get more excitement. Now, these guys are not arguing with each other. Can I comment to you on the black here? We'll step aside here. Should have one lap to green. While we're at, we can try and talk with someone. We'll, let's talk with Dylan Clark while we're at it. Dylan on board, man. I'm going to talk with you here. Uh, just your thoughts on what we've been seeing so far early on now uh, with you. I think you're happy to be leaning out in front right now. I definitely am. It's, uh, from what I've heard, it's mayhem back there. 
so yeah. I'm kind of glad that we're uh, up here, leading some laps, got that stage one win. Hopefully get stage two, but we'll see. See how it goes. Absolutely, you gained the points, man. I'll let you know this if you want to relay this back to your team that there was a missed shift. I don't know if you heard okay. about that. I did not. Yeah, that's what happened. Uh, Broderick missed his shift, so if you want to relay that back to your team, uh, that would be great here. So just uh, your plans here for stage number two and then on the caution break, I know you're going to pit. Yep, just uh, trying to keep my nose clean like I have most of the race. Uh, I think I'm still at 0x. Yep, I am. Hey, look uh, at you. Good job. You get a round um, of you get a sticker from me. <laughs> I'm going to put that on my car. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make um, I'll make you a fun little piece. Okay. Make sure it's bright color. Bright colors. <laughs> It'll stand out. <laughs> um, mostly just keep my car clean. Um, try and keep it consistent. Just motor around. All right, sounds good. We'll let you go. Good luck on this restart. Thank you, sir. That is Dylan Clark as we get ready to go back to the green flag. Let's reset the field here for you as they come into the bus stop. It is Dylan Clark and Tyler Isley. The front row, Kayla McCarthy, Kyle Milliken in row number two. Row three, David Salter and David Smeal Jr. Row four, Alan Crowell and Josh Susie in row five. We believe Landon Lacey and Don DeGrudena is. A field goes around the carousel. Now that would be a nice seat to watch from. Stand on top of your RV and watch the drivers go around that 10 degree of banking in the outer loop. That would be pretty cool, and watching them fly right into the boot if you're a sports car fan at home. So, all right, we should be good to go back to green for stage number two. We've got 12 drivers on the lead lap. Swope still on track. Same with Mayberry and Robinson. Broderick, we know, is out of the race. And Justin Diltz is also out, too. After all of what just happened. Back to green. Man, Dylan Clark checks out big time as Isley gets by for second on McCarthy. That's his best restart today. One almost went off track, and that's Smeal in the 29. That's the battle for fifth, the top four single file. Remember, pit road closes with two laps to go. Landon Lacey, despite the spin, has recovered and is up to sixth spot. Now looking for fifth. Nice move on Smeal Jr. Takes a peek inside. But lets him go at the bus stop. Salter and Susie going at it for seventh on track. Nice recovery from Susie after getting into it with Ryan Broderick. Here's the run for Lacey inside on Smeal. An inc impressive battle happening for fifth position. Lacey doesn't have the preferred line though. Smeal's playing defense. Great job by Smeal to play defense. But here's the crossover for Lacey. He tries to go around the outside. He can't do it yet. But he crosses Smeal over for position. And Lacey takes up the P5-2 to go in the stage. And the yellow, the yellow comes out when they end lap number 40. Here comes Susi in this battle as well. What? Susie saying something is he can't hear a spotter or something. That's very strange. The driver 12, and he caught the wall again. That's like the third time he's done that in this race, and that's going to cost him seventh spot to Salter. 
Wow, can you believe what's happening here? Oh, Salter, can he save it? Yes, he can, and Susie takes the spot back. Second spot is on. McCarthy and Isley. McCarthy took away P2 after the restart. Dylan Clark has no idea what he is missing at the moment. Oh, McCarthy went wide. Here's the run for Lacey underneath on Milliken. He's got his nose under there. Milliken's loose off of seven. I can't stay in racing around these guys. <laughs> Final lap underway. In stage number two. Clark making his way up the asses. A tremendous lead here, here as we come to the conclusion of stage two. Currently in 10th position, Mark Sakosi. He's battling Don DeGroote for ninth. Who would have thought DeGroote would be in P9 by now? I'm going to tell you this, by the way. Susie is in the pits for a drive through penalty we're hearing. If I'm assuming this correctly here, Lynn, this would be his first. So Susie would not get any stage points in that situation. And trouble behind them, Briggs Swope, that is in the bus stop as they approach it. That is a very weird angle. And he is stuck, won't bring the yellow out. Instead, the yellow will come out here for the green and white checkered flag. Dylan Clark won stage one, and he wins stage two. As we come to the yellow flag, and the pace truck, pace car will come up to Dylan Clark. That's the end of stage two. You hear it right there. So before we step aside here real quick, let's we'll actually keep it with you here and watch what happened with Briggs Swope in one of the weirdest situations I've seen. Did he just get the grasp with a tire and just lose it? He turned it to the right. Oh, wow. It's like he locked, it's like he hit the brakes while turning right to set up the apex. No, no here. Oh, that's why. Yeah, you don't want to be doing that at the Glen. He went down to second gear. Let's watch that again from the row bar angle. He never even shifted it up to fifth gear. He went down two gears and that is why you do not want to go to second gear entering the bus stop with the next gens of the Glen. That's a tough break for Briggs Swope who was one of the cleanest drivers here in terms of zero X. And it's still Dylan Clark with the Zero Rex, as far as what I know. Isley? I don't think so. I think he is still good. Mark, of course, we do know he does have some X after what the heck happened. So pit road is open for the drivers this time and we will watch them. I would assume Landon Lacey would assume the lead here. Is he gonna come in with his teammates and he will. Top three all KTS for those wondering of Clark, McCarthy and Lacey. Four tires and feel. If Ashton Crowder was in this race, this would be the time where he'd take a pit stop. And an extended pit stop. Even one in real life.
Salter wins the race off pit row. Now, he did fuel only on his stop. And will assume the race lead. So he'll lead some laps. This is the first driver today, not named Lacey or Clark, that leads here at the Glen. McCarthy came out third, Lacey fourth, and Isley fifth. So that is how your top five looks when we come back to the green flag here at Watkins Glen for to begin stage number three. 41 laps are in the books. We are halfway through. Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. One lap to, gr to green, we'll listen to radio while we're at it. All right. <laughs> he didn't declare, but looks like he took the left. Right foot. Your other left. You all knew what I meant. Why can't we do a Delaware double? <laughs> but yes, my other left. We're just messing around. I have my thumb going the same direction. Don't check me. Bet you won't black flag me. Please don't. <laughs> Alrighty, we are ready to go back to the green flag. Let's reset the field here for you. David Salter from 19th to the lead is the control car with Dylan Clark next to him. Row number two, Kayla McCarthy and Landon Lacey. Row three, David Smeal Jr. and Tyler Isley. Row four, Alan Crowell and Kyle Milliken. Row five is Brian Preslar and Don DeGroote. 
Row 6 is Mark Sikosi and Josh Susi. On the tail of the lead lap is Stan Mayberry in 13th position. Alex Robinson and Briggs Swope each a couple of laps down. Four drivers are out of the race. Ryan Broderick, Justin Diltz, Jimmy Barr, and Jeffrey Cox. Hoping to have a 39-lap sprint to the finish here at the Glen. I shouldn't say sprint because it's a long 39 laps around New York. But David Salter is the control car as we are ready to go back to the green flag here at the Glen. on the restart of Salter and Clark should have the nod and one to clear down and he does. Lacey tries to go around the outside with the right side damaged up. And he does. Lacey takes away P2 and this is going to be a Salter scramble around the field or a salty scramble to try and get around David. McCarthy loose off in, in the final part of the S is here comes Smeal around the outside. He have it to stick here. Yes, he does. Nice pass on McCarthy as Smeal takes away P4. Now how does he get around Salter in the 88? Meanwhile, for the lead, Landon Lacey wants it back on Dylan Clark. Top two have pulled away from the field behind them. Half a second between the top two. I think this may be what Dylan Clark wants to have Lacey in his rear view mirror. Meanwhile, Salter trying to hold off Spiel for third position and another Salter stack up in the S's. makes the first move into the bus stop. Milliken looking, Milliken looking, Smeal tries to take a peek down low, and he can't do it. A completely different entry compared to Salter, and Milliken wants to go around the outside on Tyler Isley. Oh, they it's like okay, that's Salter, who goes around the outside, who takes the outside line and lets the field go by. Tyler Isley is up to P5. Josh Susi way off track in the number 12. Meanwhile for the race lead, Clark and Lacey. Gap is opened up to eighth tenths of a second for the number 34. Here we go for third position. That's McCarthy trying to look on Smeal. And a one, sets it up beautifully. Nice pass from McCarthy. Smeal gets the bumper from Isley. Alex Robinson has taken his machine into pit road. Milliken looks. Same with Smeal. Trying to take away third and the bus stop sends it in big time and somehow keeps his car between the island. What a pass from Smeal but McCarthy's on the tail. That was crazy. Somehow, Smeal still has third position. Meanwhile, for those wondering, yeah, that's literally the gap between the top two and third on back. Milliken inside, takes away fifth from Isley. Salter still trying to fight in this mess up. Josh Susi makes the pass for seventh position. Here's McCarthy once again. Couple car lengths back, can't make the move yet. All the way down to second gear. Big lockup from Smeal. He's off the track. And into those marbles where you do not want to be. And that is costing Smeal many positions. He's lost two and now three. A 
Now Josh still, oh man, what a block. What a block. That was a risky block. Susie's not had a happy day so far. And it's not afraid to dump somebody at this moment. He is like a madman like Alexander Rossi. I would not be surprised if in real life he'd have his foot out, if he had his hand out the window, telling Smil that he's number one. Meanwhile, Clark and Lacey continue to duke it out. The gap is down to a quarter of a second. McCarthy third, Milliken is fourth. Isley fifth, Smeal sixth, and Susie seventh. Susie trying that inside. Sixth spot is on the line. Susie's got corner entry, but can't get it. Tucks it back in line as he lets Smeal go by. But Smeal again, way wide. He may have locked them up. I don't see any smoke in the corner. As Susie takes away sixth position. Let's go up to the front of the field where we got the battle for the lead. Dylan Clark and Landon Lacey out of the outer loop. 47 laps in the books. But can you believe it? The top two... It's like they're on split screen trying to play NASCAR 07 on easy difficulty or on the easiest difficulty. This is on board with the 53 of Landon Lacey. Couple car links back. Like just about equal driving, equal exits by the top two. Dylan Clark won the first two stages of this one, has had a great race so far. Brian Preslar reporting that he is in the pits. Imagine, by the way, if the top two are not in the battle for the win in the final laps. That would be. That's like a Vegas shocker. Let's go to third position here. Kayla McCarthy on the podium at the moment. And Kyle Milliken is trying to change that. But he's been a top seven, top eight contender, but normally very quiet when it comes to trying to race up front. Behind them, it is Susie closing in on Isley for fifth position. Former teammates. So Isley went to the Ben Park Sim Lab team. On board with Susie. Remember, if Isley does not win this race today, Susie clinches the number one seed in the playoffs when that begins in a couple weeks in just about a month from now. We can confirm to you, by the way, Alex Robinson has parked it for the evening, not disqualified, but uh, he is on snow duty tomorrow morning. So it's not worth it. So there goes Susie by and Isley takes away fifth position. Good. Back to third spot. McCarthy and Milliken still duking at it. Behind right now. Mark Sikosi going by David Salter. That's for eighth position. Remember, Salter did gas only. And, and instead of four tires like everyone else, this evening gained some track position and also a yellow. So we will see what happens. So 51, 50 laps are in the books. The leaders are working on lap traffic as we continue to watch this battle for the race lead. Now the question is, 
when does Lacey make his move or does he wait to make it? Oh, hold up, where's Clark? There he is. Give me a heart attack for a moment. Remember, these are the top two. They're teammates out of the KTS camp. So Lacey lost a bit of time there. So 51 laps are about to go up on the board. Dylan Clark, Landon Lacey, Kayla McCarthy, Kyle Milliken, and Josh Stutzi. The top five as we go side by side. You're watching on track, and you've been watching it side by side. Three cars battling for third position, which could be now fourth position. Here comes Josh Susi trying to go around the outside, and which could be the inside on Kyle Milliken, fourth position, and Susi makes the pass work. So Josh Susi trying to rebound. He's done a great job rebounding after what went down and that brought out the first Full course yellow from a crash. When there was contact with Ryan Broderick that sent him around in the S's. Meanwhile, we've got the battle for the lead once again. Dylan Clark and Landon Lacey. But again, I don't expect Landon Lacey to get aggressive on making the pass. He oh, may try this time. Just about a quarter of a groove higher. I don't think he'll really take a big risk on making the pass thick. Oh, man, they're blocking fun. This is a fun race between the top two. Again, they are teammates. Keep in mind, so Dylan Clark will break later than Landon Lacey to prevent something from happening. Here goes Lacey to the inside at seven. They nearly made contact, and Lacey backs off big time. Clark may have scraped the wall. I don't know. But that opens the gap to about three quarters of a second, but we know Landon Lacey is the faster car at the moment. Let's go back behind them as Milliken trying to continue on. Let's ride on board for a lap with Milliken. We've got reports that Stan Mayberry went off track, but he's good. Most off tracks we have seen today amongst the field. Eight from Briggs Swope. At least eight. I don't know if Lynn can confirm that right now. He's got at least eight X, I know that. Let's 
go up to the front. Let's go back up a couple positions ahead. And watch Susie and McCarthy, the teammates. Susie goes wide, opens the door for Milliken. By the way, I apologize, Kyle, if I have been saying Aiden Milliken. I can't recall correctly. There was a guy with the same last name I used to broadcast for a couple of years ago and had that exact same name. So I hope I haven't been screwing you up tonight, Kyle. <laughs> so the update per race control, Brig has 9X, Stilts 14, Alex has 12. David Smeal Jr. is in the pits and will give up 8th position at the moment, and I would assume this is to change, get up to four tires. That is a drive through penalty for Smeal, not a change of tires. Never mind. Lacey on the radio. Saying never mind is something. I don't know what it was from. I don't know why a lap car would pick up the inside line. And they are calling out Mayberry, I believe. Now, when it comes to road course racing, specifically sports car racing, and if someone races in the Rolex 44 this weekend, they'll understand what happens here. For fast cars like prototype cars, and there is a role in another series I broadcast called the Major Series. In that series, there is a little bit of a gentleman's agreement, I would say. The slower traffic in GT run their lines. The prototypes will find a way to get around them, whether it be the inside or the outside. So for the slower traffic, personally, I would, I would say hold their lines. The hell with the blue flag. The blue flag does not mean let the cars go by. As we got a battle for the lead here, Lacey's got to run, trying to go around the outside. And Smeal is back in the pits. Lacey almost got in that quarter panel of clock. But you know what I mean, right? The blue and with yellow striped flag does not mean to let traffic by. It just lets you know that faster traffic is coming behind you. Okay? That's the thing. And I've learned that a lot. They say that a lot. Last weekend, I did the roar on iRacing. And that was a big thing that was talked about. I did it that way with the MX-5. And I'm going to do it as well this weekend uh, with the Mercedes GT3 for the 24. Josh Susie, Kayla McCarthy battling for third. I'm out the KTS team. One, two, three, four. They have been incredible. They're like the Mercedes of the NSRO Cup Series. Now, when it comes, who is, now who's the Red Bull of the series? I'd say Mark Sikosi. I cannot recall what team he is on, but I think it's with Justin Diltz, it is. I'd say Mark Sikosi is the Red Bull of the organization. The Ferraris, uh, because Isley is with the team now, give me the Ben Part Simlab team. As for the Haas guys, I would say um, the DraftKings Racing team. I'm sorry. Sorry, Brig. And then for the AlphaTari teams, here we go for the lead, though. Lacey had a run. Knocks it back. As for the AlphaTari teams, I would say full throttle mo motorsport because it's David Salter in the field and you never know when he'll have a chance. <laughs> so, that's my opinion if we were to compare NSRO teams to Formula One. So, we've got 24 laps to go in the 200 at the Glen. While we're at it, let's give this opportunity, let's take this opportunity to let you know where we are next week in the NSRO Cup Series. And next week, we're at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And no, not the road course, the Oval for the Brickyard 250 for 100 laps on the National Sim Racing League Facebook page and twitch.tv slash Marty Sakala. 
Lacey to the inside, no. Oh, Clark goes wide and Lacey brings it into pit road. Final stop of the race. Remember, they went 20 laps, caution free. And they got a couple of extra laps. <laughs> Lynn says, leave my DraftKings teammates alone. They are not Haas. They're more like McLaren. McLaren's fast, though. McLaren is fast. Truck teammates should clarify. <laughs> so Landon Lacey is the leader. Now here we have the horsepower advantage off turn one when Dylan Clark comes in and pits. Let's go back and watch second and third. McCarthy and Susie. Order over second separates them. The best battle on track for P2. David Salter also in pit row. Landon Lacey is out. 14.8 seconds stop. And the 53 just exiting the S's. Josh Susie takes away second position. Nice pass. Something we didn't expect there. 12 is creeping in. Dylan Clark now brings the number 34 into pit road. His final stop of the race. Salter does fuel only again. I don't know what his strategy is, but it is, it's just baffling. They are fast and clean. Catch them next week at Indy with a truck race at Charlotte. Basically Lightning McQueen. <laughs> Minus Landon Lacey, who is a robot. <laughs> You mean Rob Ott? <laughs> so Clark is in the pits, and this will give the lead to Milliken. Don't think he led the lap at the line, though. Susie and McCarthy, by the way, they do come in together. So they come in early here, and they will have worn tires, but I don't think it will really matter. They are the class of the field this race. And even with the Warren Tires, I don't think it will really matter. Dylan Clark exited in third spot. Landon Lacey got by for the lead with a 14.8. Again, we know Lance Lacey is the faster car on the track and was able to jump Dylan Clark there, pitting first. And I don't think it really matter coming in one lap earlier than Clark. Obviously, we hit yet to see him pit. Same with Milliken. Oh, trouble. Brick Swope around in the seven. In the inner loop. He saved it, though. It's still straight. Let's confirm here. Oh, contact with. Oh, Sakosi lost the front end. That's not good. That is not good at all. I'm surprised such slight contact would lead to that. Braked early. And Sakosi, oh, he, he was either wheel hopping or he brake checked. Milliken in for his final stop. We'll see where he cycles through. It's behind Susie. And behind McCarthy. So Landon Lacey, the race leader, as he comes to 20 laps to go this time, still waiting on a couple of drivers. Isley, Sikosi, and Crowell for them to come in. They are currently third through fifth. And Crowell's coming in. We see Sikosi in on the bottom. Still waiting on Isley in third position. 
Isley, is that a hood off? Wow. He had contact with someone, but in the words of Phil Swift, that is a lot of damage. We do have him off track a couple of minutes ago. Did that relate to anything? Oh, yes. He wrecked it in the tire barriers. And that was before Brick Swope wrecked, so we apologize for missing that. But that is, I think he's trying to go as long as possible because when he comes into pit, that will be required damage he'll have to repair. And he's the only guy amongst the leaders that we are waiting on. He's 11 seconds in front of Susie. But still running in third position. Isley, a two-time winner this season, won the Daytona 300, along with the World 375. Likes to win those prestigious races. This isn't considered prestigious, so I'd say watch out for him at Indy next week. Milliken back into pit road, this, and it is considered a stop as he's out with 12.5 seconds. A late stop for Milliken that puts him all the way back to ninth. He's out of the race. Milliken parked it for the race. I have no idea why. But that's ridiculous. So Lacey goes another lap. We'll compare the lap times here. I mean, I know it doesn't matter. But that just shows you how faster Josh Susie is. No big battles on track. We can tell you, though, Landon Lacey is up by four seconds. The closest battle I have on my screen is with Don DeGroot trying to close in on Stan Mayberry for ninth, and that is about two seconds, the delta between the two drivers. Biggest mover of the race is David Salter from 19th up to 6th. With 18 laps to go on the lead lap, trying to do this with 60 laps of tires. I think it is. If not, it's 50. Because we had the yellows on lap 30. We'll see what he can do. He's working on the lap car of Brian Preslar. Just trying to go around him. He, remember, he just has to hold his racing line because... When, race, when lap cars don't hold their racing lines, they can, you know, be unpredictable. Isley going another lap. Now, thinking about this. I do not think he's ha he has enough to go the distance. And let me explain the reason why. In this series... Pardon me on that. There is no fuel cap in this series. But I can tell you this. It is very tough to try and make it on 40 laps. Normally you see drivers come in between with 25 laps. So as you can see, 61, 66. That would be with about, just about 15 laps to go. So I would expect Isley any moment to come in. The fact that he has not yet come into the pit road surprises me big time. Meanwhile, for ninth, DeGroote has closed in on Mayberry for the position as Briggs Swope has brought his machine back into pit road. Just 
confirming my notes here. DeGroote does have 20 laps of fresher tires compared to Mayberry, who is yet to come into pit road. Right on board with the 20. He's making his National Sim Racing League debut. Got some heat from Isley earlier after the first one day when we had one to green for our first restart. But he wouldn't drop to the back. He stayed in the racing line. And Isley did threaten him to threaten to spin him out. Like, don't do that to a rookie, man. That's just rude. Not to call Isley that on that because I like because Ice is a great dude. But come on. 15 laps to go. Landon Lacey continues to lead by three seconds. There's Clark right behind him. And Isley makes his way into the pits. And that will be required damage. Why don't we compare the last five laps? Four of the last five. Clark is inching closer. 3.7 seconds. And I think he could catch him by the end of this race. Who knows? Lacey looking for his third win of the season and it would be back-to-back -back wins Dylan Clark is looking for his second his first was at Road America and Clark way off track what in the world just happened to Dylan he went way wide in six he locked him up big time trying to work on Sakosi. Almost got in the gravel trap. If he hits the gravel, his race is done. Here's where, yeah, he locked him up. Try not to hit Sakosi. That's the thing. So that puts him back six and a half seconds. I don't think it's going to be enough for Clark to close in. So that's a tough break there. So Lacey, Clark, Susie, McCarthy, the only drivers on the lead lap. When we come back, we are taking you right to the finish, but you're not going to miss a thing as we go side by side. Stay with us. Landon Lacey continues to lead here at the Glen. We have just about 12 laps to go. Want to take this opportunity while we're at it to shout out our sponsors. You've been seeing them on the bottom right of your screen the entire night. Without them, none of this is possible. Of course, you know Speed Demon setups, graphics, and TV along with affordable SEO and marketing. We also have Elevated Outdoors and Butt Kicker. 
On behalf of everyone at National Sim Racing League, thank you for all of your support and along with the fans as well. 11 laps to go for Landon Lacey. He has led the most laps. However, though, he has not won all of the stages tonight. That goes to Dylan Clark, who is in second position. Landon Lacey, though, jumped Dylan Clark on pit stops. They were close to each other before their final pit stops of the evening as Dylan Clark was leading. He was about, I want to say, maybe 3.7 seconds behind on Landon Lacey. And then when uh, he came in at turn number seven working on Mark Sakosi, this happened. We'll show you it once again. Locks the brakes up. Into the skid pad, the runoff area he goes. Oh, that close again to hitting the gravel trap. If he hits that, he is going into the wall and his day is over. And that would have been a shocker right there. Let's check the gap though. It is 8.8 .8 seconds. That is between Clark and Susie. Look at that. Nobody has anything for Clark or Lacey. And then you see Lacey, how much faster he is. This is Landon, Racy's, Landon Lacey's race to lose at the moment. He flat spot his tires, locked them up, used a lot of wear. And it will end, likely going to end his racing day today. But the KTS drivers are the only drivers on the lead lab. Landon Lacey, Dylan Clark. Josh Susi and Kayla McCarthy. The 53 of Lacey's in the bus stop. McCarthy is about to enter turn number six. You gotta give credit. They've had a great. They've done a great job tonight. David Salter still in the seventh position and has not lost a lot of time to the guy behind him and Alan Crowell. So you got to give him credit there. Still in seventh position on maybe 50 laps of worn tires. Will not be disappointed with his run. Starting from 19th and has made his way up to seventh. Mark Sikosi, I think, just passed him for sixth position. What a destroyed race car, a modified car the number 91 has. In case you're wondering how he got that, there was contact when he locked the brakes up with the seven of Briggs Swope made contact with him. He kept the cars going, but it sent the seven for a sideways run. Briggs Swope currently in 13th position. If a yellow flag does come out, Isley is the first car a lap down. If we take a look at Isley, still doesn't have the hood on his car, so I think that was just optional damage. Isley wanted to get back out on that track as soon as possible. It's about 10 seconds behind on Isley as Dylan Clark starts to work on him. He just hit that big bump on the inner loop. There's a big sausage curb that's been updated in the new textures from iRacing. So eight laps to go here. Again, next week we are at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. That should be a fun one. You do not want to miss out on that. We are at the Oval of IMS at Roger Penske's home. The Brickyard 250, it's 100 laps. Start time is at 7, it's at 8.45 p.m. on twitch.tv slash Marty Sakawa. Regular season coming on up. The end of the year, we've got Indianapolis, Michigan, and then Twin Ring Motegi, yes. At the end of the year, we're going to Japan, virtual Japan. Last time I watched Twin, Twin Ring Motegi was an Indy car race, and I think it was 2011 when they were on the road course. To I see the news, Lacey on the radio. I think he is asking David Smeal to move or saying thank you to Isley for moving. Isley's in turn number six. I think he was asking Isley to move for Dylan Clark. I think
think that is the storyline at the moment. The lead is up to big time to 11 seconds. Clark Thank you, Don. Flat, sp flat spotted his tires. Closest battle we have is David Salter and Mark Sikosi. Remember, Sikosi just made that pass for sixth position. That gap increases on David Salter, the Iowa winner. Now, as we take a look at the standings, a couple of drivers aren't eligible because they started late on the year, like Salter, only his fifth start on the season. Landon Lacey's win won't count. His debut race was at Iowa in December. Won't be able to hit the 13 mark. But for Josh Susie though, as long as we don't get a late race caution, Susie will be the number one seed in the playoffs with five wins. He has made every race this season. And a nice rebound from for him after that contact in the S is right here in this exact area with Ryan Broderick. A couple of other drivers let's talk about. Don DeGroote in his debut, there he is. Ninth place run, I'd say this is a great debut for the driver of the number 20 on the road course. I wouldn't be disappointed in his run if I was Don, the lone Canadian, by the way, in the field. He's got the Canada flag on my end. Everyone else is from the U.S. of A. Kayla McCarthy in fourth place, having a nice run as well. Started from third, has been very consistent inside the top five. Only one off track I see doesn't have... Has Kept the car clean, honestly, in my opinion, of the drivers that finish outside of Lacey and Clark. Of course, Lacey's got damage. Clark, I think he's got damage. I don't know. I believe that Kayla McCarthy has the cleanest car at the moment. I think I see a tiny bit of damage on the front end of the machine. Kayla's had a great run today. Why don't we look at the rest of the field? Mayberry was involved in a wreck. Smeal was involved in something, the front end. Ooh, Smeal looks pretty clean in my opinion as well. Let's go to this left side. Any paint scuffs? Not really. Smeal's got a clean car. Only five off tracks though. Preslar's car. I think he was involved in a wreck though. So he may have used some damage repairs. Same with Briggs 12 who's got the damaged car. Those are the only drivers we can look at. Everyone else is out of the race. Justin Diltz still being Justin Diltz on pit road. Going to be four laps to go at the line for Landon Lacey. It will be his third win on the year. Again, not eligible for the playoffs but one of the more respected drivers here in the series. Big lead, now can he lap McCarthy? I think he'll let McCarthy off the hook easy. In the S's, Lacey's about to enter, McCarthy's about to exit. I think if Lacey catches up to McCarthy, I think he'll slow down. And I think Dylan Clark would do the same thing, probably. They're in safe positions where they wanna be. But if Clark closes in, though, I think Lacey will lap Kayla. But I think everyone's going to stay in the positions they will be unless we do get a late race yellow. But so far, nothing big that we need to talk about on our screens. I think, in my opinion, this is probably one of the more better road course races we have had on the season. So a round of applause for all the drivers. They have really put on a great show in this race. Hasn't been like a Formula One boring like race where it's all just about strategy. This has been really a race where not just strategy but also trying to pass the guy. A lot of passing, probably the most passes we've had in a road course race. A lot of Rex drivers have had a dodge. Um, a lot of stack ups on the field. 
it's been a great race and can't be more proud of the drivers coming here to Watkins Glen, New York. Two hours from where I live, by the way. I'm in the western New York area. And it's been great. One of the better laps, by the way, just came from Dylan Clark, was about half second faster than Landon Lacey last time around. But what we saw last time, the Lacey did get a little bit loose. Exiting turn five, but Lacey looking good at the moment for the rest of this race. He'll see the popsicles this time. I don't think he'll catch McCarthy to the end. We'll have two laps to go at the Glen. Lacey so far this season, two top fives, three top tens. His two top fives on the year have come from wins everywhere, everywhere else. He's been inside the top ten. And we're definitely looking forward to talking with your top three. I'm really looking forward to hearing what Josh Susi has to say about overcoming all he has been through. That is a dent up machine at a road course where aerodynamics really matter with all the straightaways there are, all the fast corners. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what he has to say. His opponent can't see him behind in the rear view mirror, 15 seconds back. Off a of turn seven and a nice crowd here of virtual fans at the Glen. Here's the white flag for Landon Lacey. One lap to go at the Glen. And we'll just ride on board here with Lacey as he drives it home scot-free to the finish. Playing her nice and safe and make it home to the finish. One final corner for Landon Lacey. A great race for him today as Landon Lacey takes the checkered flag. Lacey wins it at the Glen. And a great performance for him today. Coming to the stripe right now. I know the timing changes. It's a little bit weird, but here comes Dylan Clark taking a second place finish. Josh Susi down the back straightaway. Isley comes across the line in third. And what that means, ladies and gentlemen, all four KTS drivers, one, two, three, four. What a run for them. They will not be disappointed. They had the perfect race today. I guess you could say they didn't lead all the laps, but it sure was a perfect race. Josh Susi off of turn seven. He'll take the third place finish. I'm in their radios right now because guess what? I don't care because here comes McCarthy off of turn four. The perfect race, KTS, one, two, three, four. Landon, you led the way to the end. How does that sound? It sounds great. You know, I had an awesome battle with my teammate there. 
uh, before pit stops had to uh, kind of pull a little bit of strategy on him and pull the undercut to get ahead of him. Uh, but overall, very, very happy with the performance of this team. Um, you know, we've been putting in hard work week in and week out, and it's nice to see it pay off. Now I gotta ask, did you and Clark like have the AI difficulty set to easy or something? Like what the heck happened? I mean, I, I just I just think me and Clark are really are really good road course racers, and, and I think that showed tonight. And uh, you know, Dylan puts in great work, and you know, Josh and Kayla put in great work to get to get up there with us as well. So uh, very proud of these guys, and, and proud of the whole team for the work that they put in. Well, nice job from you. Congrats on the win. Let's go to Dylan now. Dylan, I know you'll absolutely take a second place finish. That's for sure. I do want to ask, though, about turn six with you and Sakosi when you locked it up. What happened from your perspective? Just lap cars not getting out of the way. It's kind of frustrating. You're going into a, a corner, and he just stops on entry, and then you're not expected it. And uh, it's frustrating, but I think Landon had it sealed once he got it past me. But uh, that was a fun race. One of the more fun ones for sure. Did you flat spot the tires there in turn six? Is that really what used up all the uh, tire wear there? Yep, for sure. I uh, I cooked them, try not to run into them. And uh, I think that was my undoing, but I'll take a P2 any day of the week. Absolutely, you will. Josh, I'm going to ask this. How in the world did you rebound from catching the wall way too many times, even spinning out from contact? to finishing on the podium. Uh, I was told I needed to learn how to drive, and I didn't know how to drive. <laughs> yeah, um, I like the sarcasm there coming from that one guy who completely turned up into you. I was, I couldn't believe what happened there. And what was as well the most dangerous part of the racing surface as well, but this third place finish really shows you've got the drive, you've got the confidence to not give up and make your way back up on the podium. I do want to ask, though, was there any optional damage you had on the car or no? Oh, yeah. I had about three minutes optional between all the incidents throughout the race. And I was down on horsepower. And somehow you still finished in third. Well done to you. Kayla, I think you had the cleanest car of them all. Uh, I know we don't interview the top three, but I do want to get to your perspective with the KTS top four finish. Fourth place run for you, cleanest car of them all. Is that just really what road racing is all about? Just playing it safe, being conservative, trying to dodge all those bullets? Yeah, it really is. I mean, you just got to take take uh, take a fall when, when guys don't capitalize, and, and you can. Um, we almost didn't qualify tonight for the race just because I wasn't sure. Um, and I saw how we how how much speed we had in practice. And, uh, thanks to Susie and... And Dylan for the reassurance that hey, I could be you know the top five for qualifying and be out of the mess. So when I went and qualified, um, I can't be proud of this team, this KTS TSM team. These guys, um, the amount of work we all put in every week, every day, just uh, I can't wait for the playoffs, man. We're 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 definitely moving. Landon, I'll let you lead this one. Who do you want to give shoutouts to tonight on behalf of the team? Um, yeah, of course, want to shout out uh, to Edge Setup Shop uh, for, for me specifically. Um, thank you to everything those guys do. Um, Martin Sports um, is another big one for me, so thank you to those guys. Um, competition Designs, uh, if you're looking for a paint, uh, they have paint starting at $5 in package prices, uh, so check them out on Facebook at Competition Designs. Um, thanks to Charge Racing. Uh, thanks to all my teammates at KTS. Um, thank you to Mark and all the admins for putting this on. Thank you to broadcast for the broadcast. Um, and basically, thank you to everybody else that's gotten me here to this point. Well, guys, enjoy this top four finish. I know you'll be partying all night on this one. Congratulations. Thanks, sir. <laughs> Landon Lacey, the win, and a KTS one, two, three, four lockout congratulations to them on the run your official results from tonight we won't show you the guy in 19th but that was jeffrey cox that is how everyone finished and again the kts drivers all finished on the lead lap a great run from all of them 
Tyler Isley, fifth. Mark Sikosi, sixth. David Salter, seventh. Alan Crowell, eighth. Don DeGroote, ninth. And Stan Mayberry in tenth. So that will do it for us tonight. Next week, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, 8.45 p.m. start time. Don't miss it. Shout out to all of our sponsors you see on the bottom right of your screen. Affordable SEO and marketing, butt kicker, speed demon setups and graphics and TV, and elevated outdoors. On behalf of everyone at the National Sim Racing League, including our admins, our race control director, Chris Lynn, and our admins in charge, Mark Sikosi and Justin Dilt. Marty Sakala signing off for tonight. Landon Lacey is your race winner tonight. He does it at the Glen. Thank you all for joining us tonight. So long from Southern Tier of New York, everyone.